FTX is one of the fastest growing companies in the history of business. In less than three years, the cryptocurrency exchange has achieved a valuation of over $32 billion, serving over 6 million registered users in over 200 countries. This feat would have taken traditional big banks, hedge funds, and other businesses decades of planning, investing, and aggressive marketing. So how did they do it? To be fair, FTX has been very lucky to have been built during the recent crypto boom of the early 2020s, but a lot of their success also has to do with product innovation operational execution and product market fit driven by its founder, Sam Bankman Freed, popularly known as SBF. Being a trader himself, SBF built FTX for traders by traders, building an exchange that was an overnight success. Don't get me wrong, there are countless exchanges that have come and gone, but what has allowed FTX and SBF to stay so relevant? And how has FTX overtaken other leading exchanges in such a short amount of time? Even as a young self-described math nerd, SBF seemed to be destined for success in crypto. SBF grew up in a highly academic setting as a son of two Stanford law professors, studied physics at MIT, and worked on Wall Street as a quantitative trader. After leaving Wall Street in 2017, he became interested in the crypto ecosystem and the crypto boom that gripped the markets towards the end of that year. As he began to study the market, SBF's trading instincts kicked into overdrive and he discovered the arbitrage opportunity of a lifetime in the US and Asian crypto markets. His fascination with such an opportunity later evolved into an obsession. Because you see, during that period, SBF noticed that Bitcoin was traded at a substantially higher price in Korea than in the United States due to differences in demand. For example, at that time, an investor might purchase Bitcoin for $5,000 on an American exchange and instantly sell it for $7,500 in Korea. The kimchi premium, as it was known, sometimes exceeded 50%. So SBF and other traders jumped on the opportunity, but SBF was quick to realize its limitations. SBF noticed that the magnitude of the opportunity was limited since the Korean won was a restricted currency. Simply put, building a business around the strategy and deploying hundreds of millions of dollars on the strategy was unrealistic. On the lookout for something more significant, SBF recognized that the Japanese market shared many of the same characteristics as the Korean market. He discovered that Bitcoin was heavily bought on the open market, resulting in a 10 to 15% premium on local exchanges. However, most importantly, the Japanese yen was not a restricted currency, enabling SBF to deploy large amounts of capital. And from this initial insight, Alameda Research was born. Alameda Research is considered by some to be the Jane Street of quantitative crypto trading. Executing the trading strategy wasn't easy to implement. Making millions never is. But through a complicated network of intermediaries, SBF was able to make his trading strategy a reality. SBF and Alameda Research started buying Bitcoin in the United States and selling it in Japan at scale. His first key hires at Alameda Research that are key to the FTX story to this day are Gary Wang, his roommate at MIT and a former Google engineer, and Nishad Singh, a high school classmate and a fresh computer science graduate from Berkeley. The profits from the Japanese arbitrage were crazy. With a fund of $100 million at its peak, Alameda invested and reinvested that money in the Bitcoin markets, making a 10% profit daily. We're talking about $10 million of profits on a daily basis. This might seem like a ridiculous amount of money to make in a day, and honestly seems unreal. 
But this amount of money making by one person is not the first time we have seen this in the history of finance. The junk bond king, Michael Milken, earned $550 million from trading junk bonds in a single year in 1987. Like crypto, junk bonds used to be highly illiquid assets. And at the time, nobody really knew how to price these things. And Michael and his firm, Drexel, Burnham, Lambert, were the ones setting the prices. And in the process, capturing large price discrepancies across the market, they captured the arbitrage. He later paid $600 million in fines and pleaded guilty to six felony counts. But that story is for another time. Back to FTX, Sam Bankman-Fried could have easily taken the millions he had made in the span of a few months and retired on a beach somewhere. But that was the furthest thing from his mind. He was just getting started. He and his team began investigating an even more substantial opportunity a year after starting Alameda. The next venture was to develop a cryptocurrency exchange that would help bring the crypto industry to Wall Street. SBF was motivated mainly by dissatisfaction with current exchanges, but he was also interested in being at the center of power power dynamics in the crypto world. Because you see, exchanges are the heart and soul of the crypto ecosystem. Despite being a competitive environment, they act as a data source, an on-ramp, and a money center for the ecosystem that collects fees on each trade. There was no better product to develop than an exchange if Sam wanted to increase his influence. And if he succeeded, his life would change forever, making him richer and more influential than in his wildest dreams. But if he failed, he might never get the same opportunity to push the fast forward button to his dreams. In late 2018, SBF Wang and Singh decided to start building the exchange FTX. But there was one issue. The United States is an unfriendly environment to establish crypto derivatives market. Regulators weren't fully on board with developing derivatives for cryptocurrency. For example, the SEC slowly silenced the ICO frenzy in early 2018, warning they would continue to scrutinize crypto exchanges throughout the year. To survive that period, the FTX team devised a strategy and SBF made a critical decision that influences company dynamics to this day. They agreed that FTX would be operating in Antigua and Barbuda with its headquarters in Hong Kong, a more crypto-friendly state. It was a momentous change requiring Wang, Singh, and other members of the team to relocate. But the sacrifice paid off because in just 26 months of operation, the company had secured an $18 billion valuation, becoming one of the most popular crypto exchanges in the world and one of the fastest growing companies companies in history to reach a decabillion dollar valuation, beating impressive companies like Coinbase, Stripe, Square, and Slack. During its early years, FTX demonstrated unparalleled creativity and an enormous appetite for risk with its products. For example, it offered futures for altcoins and offered more than 100 times leverage on trades. With such leverage, it means that if a trader adds $100,000 to their accounts, they can invest more than $10 million. While winning trades can make massive amounts of money thanks to this leverage, losers can find themselves quickly buried in debt. However, these products were exactly what institutional traders love. Since its official launch in May 2019, FTX core markets have been spot and future markets in crypto. Leverage tokens, volatility tokens, the prediction market, and the fiat market, where users can trade between fiat currencies like exchanging US dollars to euros. It also launched its utility token, FTT, which has a market cap of over $3.5 billion. In 2020 alone, FTX generated $85 million in fee revenue and is reported to have increased its revenues by 840% in 2021. The exchange currently has over 6 million users worldwide with a peak 24-hour trading volume of $21 billion in 2021. The company has also made some impressive acquisitions. In August 2020, FTX acquired Blockfolio for $150 million, providing it access to one of the most extensive cryptocurrency services for retail investors. Through this app, FTX has acquired most of its mobile users. 
FTX has also boosted its profile through sports partnerships, such as a $135 million naming rights deal with the Miami Heat and a 10-year naming rights deal with sports franchise Team Solo Mid. This push into sports and esports may be partly due to FTX interest in sports gambling, which could be the next market the cryptocurrency and blockchain operators get involved in. And FTX is now one of the most well-positioned companies for that future. FTX has proven to be very creative about its products. This can only be possible in a company aligned around experimentation and backed up with a market maker like Alameda available to provide liquidity. In addition to the central exchange, they have created Serum, a decentralized exchange founded by FTX and Alameda. FTX has also built a platform for trading NFTs that allows artists to upload and sell their work. Most things for sale are FTX branded, including sweatshirts, water bottles, hats, and of course, a set of FTX condoms with the words, increased liquidity for a smoother encounter printed on them. Also, FTX, unlike other exchanges, permits cross-margining. This means that a user's collateral can be made up of various currencies, including US dollars, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and hundreds of others. This is a significant advancement because most exchanges treat cryptocurrencies separately, requiring you to assess your collateral asset by asset. For leveraged investors, restrictions like these are inconvenient because your margin is smaller than it otherwise would be since just a part of your assets are included or you have to transfer from one asset to another to get the appropriate leverage. Besides being a crypto genius, one of the most interesting things about SBF is his commitment to philanthropy even before he joined the Billion Dollar Club. Sam Bankman-Fried founded the FTX Future Fund to support long-term advancements for humanity. Up to a billion dollars will be allocated to initiatives concentrating on massively scalable businesses that provide safe artificial intelligence, bio-risk reduction, effective altruism, and other products. SBF has essentially created a venture capital fund with him as the general partner. Running a venture capital fund in and of itself is a full-time commitment, but he's also building an exchange and running a quantitative crypto trading firm. SBF is clearly a hustler, only matched to the likes of fellow revolutionary businessman Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a prolific individual to be sure in many arenas, but that story is also for another time. FTX started as a crypto derivatives exchange, but that isn't where it will finish. His exchange has already proved that it is a firm that is prepared to explore and evolve with the desire to expand its limits well beyond the crypto sector into sports, banking, and social media to become a sort of everything exchange. However, with recent challenges pushing many crypto funds like Celsius, Vault, and others to potential bankruptcy, the question becomes, will FTX have the same fate? Given FTX's strong risk management practices honed from SBF's time on Wall Street, FTX seems to be well prepared to navigate the current crypto winter. And potentially, FTX could be even more well positioned relative to others when coming out of the current crypto recession. In fact, during this time, FTX has offered credit lines to crypto companies like BlockFi and Voyager Digital and could potentially end up acquiring those companies. But it's still early to say what the fate will be for FTX and SBF. What do you think? Will FTX become a stronger company relative to competitors once the crypto economy recovers? Or will FTX be destined to fail as the current crypto crash marks the end of a crypto era? That's all we have for you about FTX. If you enjoyed the video, support this channel by smashing the like button and don't forget to subscribe. You've been fantastic and I'll see you on the next one, Wolfpack.